Titan Number Day was considered a low point in the Bond series due to the CGI use and inclusion of Halle Berry as a Bond girl. Criticism was created after Denise Richards was cast as a nuclear physicist in Bronson's previous film, The World Is Not Enough. Was the criticism warranted, though? So I've recently watched a significant number of James Bond films due to Roger Moore's passing. I recently watched Dying Every Day because it was on Channel 31, so I decided to discuss a little bit about it. 2002's Die Another Day was Brosnan's fourth and final film in the James Bond franchise. Brosnan was the fifth actor to play James Bond in the Eon canon after Connery, Lazenby, Moore, and Dalton. It was three years after The World Is Not Enough, where the previous films each only had a two-year gap between each other. This may be possibly due to the CGI. I'm not sure. I didn't look it up, but that's what I would guess. My memory of the film was... Enjoying the homages it had to other old Bond films. I recently watched YouTuber Haphazard Stuff's Die Another Day. And my initial reaction was to object to his criticisms at least. To that aspect of the film. It worked for Final Fantasy IX so why not here. Some quips, some problems I have with this is. The forced revoking of Bond's 00 status I felt was a little bit too on the nose with License to Kill. To give an explanation, it doesn't really play into the rest of the film. I didn't quite buy it. it didn't seem believable to me. Maybe I gotta rewatch. I've only watched it like a couple. I've only watched Diana Number Day a couple of times, so maybe it makes sense. Another part is Halle Berry's homage to Ulysses Andrews's Walk of the Beach and Doctor No, the first James Bond film. It could have been worse where they could have straight up made that like the first scene in the Bond film, but they didn't do that and I thought that wasn't as bad as it could have been, although it was definitely bad. Because if you're going to homage Los Angeles' character and presence in the first film, James Bond, the first film ever of this long series, which lasted like 50 years, you figure... It would be, like, that would be a Bond girl that you remember for all the right reasons, not all the wrong reasons, and it's not remembered for the right reasons. Let's get to Halle Berry as the Bond girl of the film. Is she as bad as people say she is? Yes, she is. She's really bad. Her bond quips are awful, and you can't even really call them that. When she kills one of the henchmen, she calls them the B-word. Very James Bond-like, classy, high-class, James Bond spy thriller stuff there. Also bad was her line when she was almost dying. Her response to that of the film was the outdated 1990s, 2000s line, Your mama? Your mama? There's your mama in a James Bond film. I can't believe I just said that. And the setup was bad too. They had CGI lasers and when you're almost dying you figured there'd be some sort of motion but she didn't look like she was afraid of dying. She was like your mama. <laughs> look at over that. It's, it's pretty hilarious. There's so many clips of the worst line in movie history and I feel like that, <laughs> that eclipsed most of them. I can't believe there's not included on YouTube as much. Maybe because of MGM or UA's copyright rules. But that's definitely one of the worst lines ever in a James Bond film. Without a doubt. If not all of cinematic history. I don't know if she had a bad take. If she's a bad actress. Or she didn't even want to say the awful line either. But like, there's no reason that line has to be in the film. They could have just cut that out. And the film... The film not only would the scene be fine, but the phone would have been fine. That was a ridiculously bad line, and it's only like two words. Not to mention they had a similar... Like, Halle Berry's casting and use of her... More importantly, the use of her is really bad, because, like... She's definitely miscast in this film. Or not properly used. And they had a similar problem in the previous film with Denise Richards. They didn't learn anything from the Denise Richards criticism. 
Because in this film, they have even more Halle Berry in the film than they had Denise Richards. Denise Richards is only in the second half of The World Is Not Enough after the first half rolls around the plot and everything. Halle Berry has a very significant amount of time in the film, and there's nothing written for a limited range. She's... It's not a good role for her. There's no Oscar winning role. Some people complain about the CGI at times. It varies. I, I mean, it's James Bond. I don't consider it as serious as other people do. Sometimes it distracts, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I didn't think it hurt the film as much as it could have. But it's to me more entertainment than art anyway. I didn't think. Some of it did come off as pretty cheap and not as good as like the Golden Eye CGI. But overall, like it gave it, it doesn't give it its unique look, which I'll praise it for. And, uh, you know, there's pros and cons to this film. I would definitely recommend the first half of the film and then the second half after the Yo Mama line. I, I, I give up after that. Like, I can't concentrate on the film after that. They have. CGI electricity, where they touch the actors, pretending that they're getting shocked, and that's pretty bad too. Like, I, I don't know why they couldn't do another sword fight like they did with Gustav Graves and James Bond early in the film. That was a great scene. And then later on, they have these fake CGI, G.I. Joe, rather Cobra armor suits to fight each other with, which are really bad. And that's pretty much all I have to say about Die Another Day at the moment. Maybe I'll come up with another review later. Hope you enjoyed.